Hi everyone, welcome back. So in this tutorial, we're gonna see how we can interact or work with the, the data lake uh, without importing or you know uh, moving the data outside of the data lake. And that, that's a very, very powerful concept of, of using the, the data lake in the in the modern age because that will open the the, uh, the door of the uh, the big data analytics where uh, you don't need to import your data into into your databases whether your data is in the csv file or in the in the json format or in the parquet file just leave your data where it is uh, which is obviously if you are storing into into i would say some uh, storage area which has terabytes or even petabyte of space so uh, the the best part is instead of you know moving that data across uh, that would be awesome if we can if we can interact with this data uh, uh, while it was staying on its original location and that's where the the whole service called athena comes into the picture so aws athena allow you to interact with your s3 data lake uh, 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 in the uh, through the through the sql commands right so it's uh, it's more like you know uh, you are still in the database world you are working with the 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 relational database mindset but the data itself origin is stored in the uh, in the uh, in the data lake right so generally what we normally see in the database although the data has been stored in the data file but what normally happen we have the interface on top of the the database engine and through that client interface we issue the queries and that queries has uh, gone through the compiler which compile and put the plan and then the database engine interact with the files uh, through the operating system and extract the information and present it to us right so uh, but obviously that part has its own complication and limitation like we are bound with the with the uh, the uh, the structure data like you cannot use the unstructured to 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 run the sql queries uh we have to go towards the non-sql side and then even over there we have the limited uh, 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 uh capabilities like you cannot store terabytes of data until unless you buy that hardware or you know you buy that storage right and of uh and another big part that play uh, uh in this picture uh where if we are interacting with the with the database software regardless it's going to be non-sql or sql is going to be structured or unstructured we have to build the etls to to move the data and i'm not going to debate obviously it really depends upon the use cases uh in some use cases the etl has to be in place so it can move the data from uh from uh, 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 source into the target because the target state requires some additional business logic and rules to be implemented on that data before it can consume for for the reporting or analytical activities right so that's one scenario in the second scenario we don't need to transform data uh, or we don't need uh, sorry not transform we don't need to move the data we can still live with the with the uh, the location of, uh, uh, with the uh, uh, the storage uh, uh, where that data is if we can get the capabilities to query that data because the whole purpose is to get the data apply the same rules and then store uh, the the qualified copy right so in that case you know that initial part where we need to move the data uh, uh, to for example to staging area uh, before we can apply uh, the the uh, the uh, uh, the business rule that part has now gone because we the data is still staying in in, in its uh, in its original location is still untouched like we nobody is going to touch that area and we are pulling that data for for the the staging activities and once we apply the staging uh, ac action like looking at some uh, business rules if the uh, values are on uh, uh, their places the the data types are right uh, especially we are not getting nulls in the in the fields where we are supposed to get the value for all these activities and then we you know do the uh, then that that's first checks right and then we start transforming it like so for example if you want to standardize for example
example, some some codes in in the in the data, like where we can map against our reference data or the or the or the metadata, and uh, you know get the the standard codes before we store it into into the uh, the last layer. We generally refer as a gold layer, and gold layer is uh, generally consumed by by the by the reporting and and the analytic uh, layers, which consist of the the dashboard, right? So uh, what's the efficiency with the Athena? Athena really cut that first phase where you need to load the data in the, into the landing zone uh, uh, from your source because obviously you are unable to query directly your uh, you your raw source, I would say raw source because uh, they, they, that doesn't support the SQL. But with Athena, now we have the capability, we're gonna directly carry the, the, the raw source. We are not going to change anything. Uh, remember, we are only reading the data. That's one thing uh, because that will keep the originality intact of, of our raw data. All we are getting to actually first cut that phase, we don't need that ETL, which is a big thing. At least we can get the data reading directly from its raw source and then we start uh, you know manipulating it by saying it uh, if we look at the screen we have a very small again a small architecture where we're going to interact with with couple of aws services obviously it can be extended depends upon the the project or or the requirements from from the business but at least it will give you the 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 basic idea of how the big data analytics work in the in the most of the organization right so we have the uh AWS S3 buckets, which is going to store our data. And I'm going to show you in a moment how it looks like. Uh, we have the customer information, which is uh, based on the fake uh, information generation. Uh, I'm going to, in one of the video, I'm going to uh, discuss the, the faker that can really help you to generate all kind of fake data for, for your testing and development purposes, right? Because most of the time, you know, if your data is sensitive, you are not allowed to bring that data in your, in your dev environment. So in in that case you can generate the schema you can build some you know fake data you build your solution and then you can run it against maybe pre-prod environment or the test environment just to test the the, the functionality of, of your code right so i did the same thing i have actually created the 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 fake data using the faker python library i'm going to show you in the in the later video how you can do it by yourself but let me quickly show you the the data shape so you can see the schema is pretty straightforward. I have at the moment, I only have one table that contain first name, middle name, last name, age, city, country, date of birth, postcode, pure customer data, which I'm pretending is, is the data, which I'm storing in my organization, uh, created date and last modified date, right? So just from, from the, the, the relational uh, database uh, uh, perspective, you can see I'm also keeping a tab when it has been created and when it has been last modified, just in case if I want to build the, the warehouse on top of that data, right? And then you can see the data is coming uh, uh, properly. So what I do have, I have already created a bucket, which I'm gonna show you now in, in here. So I do have my bucket, so you can see in here, uh, AG customer information. And in that S3 bucket, uh, I have the folder called customer. And in the customer, I have loaded a bunch of files and you can see uh, these are all files, which are CSV files, right? And I've just generated, uh, I would say, random uh, uh, data for for some random dates, and you can see the timestamp is included in the in the in the file name. So you can see this customer information I'm getting for uh, first uh, of Feb, uh, twenty eleven. That's the first of March. So it, it tells me I'm getting the the data based on uh, uh, based uh, based on monthly uh, uh, pattern, right? Not like daily or hourly right and every file has a couple of thousand records we're gonna see once we uh query this data so that that's the that's the first step we have created our s3 bucket and i can load tell you that through terabytes of data into into this s3 bucket based on the uh, uh, folder structure and even under the customer if i have multiple uh, uh i would say if i have maybe thousands or even hundred thousands of files so then i can further you know structure it based on the year end and month because i know that who we are uh, 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 how the 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 file pattern uh, 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 will be arranged uh, uh, efficiently right so but 
but at this stage, because I'm just using a couple of files, so I think at this stage I'm comfortable. I'm not concerned about the performance. But in your real scenario, obviously, if you have uh, or you're expecting terabytes of data, make sure you are structuring it uh, uh, correctly in your in your data layer. That really help you once you run your query because that will help the partition keys to to you know to filter out the partition quickly and get the the required result right. So, and one thing uh, to note, uh, take down, it's in the CSV file uh, format, right? So CSV is a plain textual format that we have just seen it in, in here. And that's the comma separated file, which has its own benefit and, and uh, uh, disadvantages uh, uh, as well. And I'm not going to discuss that, but that, that's the, the base uh, scenario that we are going to uh, start with. And in the next video, we're gonna see uh, the, the Athena and we're gonna take our first step to to create the database because obviously now we are in the uh in the uh, database mindset but keep in mind this time we are not uh talking to to uh, to load the data into the structure table we are talking a different pattern where the data sits in the in the storage system and we are going to create a wrapper which is gonna uh, contain some metadata information for that uh, uh, information which is stored in the in the storage location and help us to run SQL uh, queries. So hopefully you, uh, uh, it will help you to understand the concept of the data uh, lake and um, uh, what we are going to do in this exercise. Feel free uh, to put your comments if you have any question. Happy to answer. Otherwise, stay tuned for, for the next one.